Good morning. It's another Tuesday and I'm here to speak the word of God to you. I want to say thank you to all of you who constantly open the doors of your lives and allows me the privilege to speak each week to you. May the blessings of life, may the blessings of prosperity be yours now and forever in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to remind all of you that PMI is 25 years and as has been our custom, the first Sunday in July is set aside to celebrate and thank God. This Sunday on the 5th of July at 8.30 a.m. GMT, we shall stream live a celebration Thanksgiving service to thank God for his amazing blessings on this journey as a church. A major highlight in our celebration service will be to honor the Lord with our substance. Indeed, the Lord has been good to us. And I'm urging all of you of the PMI fraternity and those who call by the, the name, those called by the name of the Lord, who in various ways have been a part of the PMI story, to join us in this celebration of honor and to give cheerfully to honor the Lord. Remember, our God loves a cheerful giver. But last week I shared on giving that honors God. Today I want to share a few thoughts on honor versus humility. Life is a journey, and some start well, but do not finish well. Some do not start too well, but they find their rhythm later on in life, and they push on to a great finish. Some also start very well and finish very well. Whichever way your life starts, the finishing must be well, and our future and our end must definitely be better than our beginning. My prayer this morning is that all of us shall finish well. Do not allow the processes of life to derail you and frustrate you. Let us finish well. I pray that your end shall be better than your beginning. And though your beginning may be small, yet your latter end shall be greatly increased. I'm reading from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12. Before distraction, the heart of man is haughty. And before honor is humility. Remember, before distraction, the heart of man, something about the heart begins to change. It becomes haughty. And before Hannah, there is also a change in the heart of man, humility. It is very easy to see people who start well in life, frustrate their own future by an attitude of pride that sometimes at the peak of their career derails their future. And ministers of the gospel and celebrities and many people are even part of this norm. A haughty heart is one that is filled with your own ways and self-righteousness and makes you proud. It is a silent cancer that makes you think of yourself as bigger and more superior than other human beings. By virtue of your physical or external attributes, maybe beauty, money, education, or achievements in the public eye. It is important that as we grow and acquire things and acquire positions, to be careful not to become haughty. Haughtiness will manifest in an attitude of arrogance. It is a very subtle influence, evil influence, that takes you from the root of life into a path of self-destruction so that you can no longer be advised or corrected. And a key missing point in a haughty spirit is the absence of authority figures and accountability figures. And everyone around you must then become a praise singer and koto to you or be excluded. The silent admonition or warning is that as you achieve more and become acclaimed in life, to make a conscious effort to stay humble. I'm talking about a very deliberate attempt not to allow yourself to be swayed by a haughty spirit, by the things you have achieved or by your physical or external things you have acquired. Not to allow yourself to be defined by what you have than by who you are. As human beings, we may not always all be 100% humble or 100% haughty, but we can definitely improve and grow our humility in various aspects of our lives. After God's rejection of King Saul, we hear Samuel's rebuke in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 17. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? You know, what endeared Saul and allowed him to eventually be made king was that he was little in his own eyes. In his own eyes. Saul, when you were small, 
Look at what happened. You were ready and available to be sent on errands. You were humble. Now God has made you king. You have even become bigger than the person who made you king. And a haughty spirit has failed you. Even God could no longer send Saul. He was too big to continue serving. And what he lost was the honor. Because before there's distraction, there's a haughty spirit. But before honor, there is humility. Contrast that with David, a shepherd boy, who still on the throne of all Israel, even in his mistakes, remembers and keeps a heart that yearns and pants after God. And look at what he says. I'll rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to be a king outside. When you are still small, what you do? It is not easy then to know what is in your heart. But as you grow in life and you become bigger, the matters and intents of your heart are now magnified. There's absolutely nothing wrong still serving as an usher, even though you are the MD or the chief executive of a company. Because before God, we must always remain little. There's nothing wrong with becoming the president and still serving in the house of God as an usher or as a prayer warrior or as a protocol officer. But unfortunately, many people in the achievements of life forget God and become God bigger than God so that God can no longer reach to them. Do not despise God when he promotes you. Still be glad when you are asked to go into the house of the Lord. This haughty and humble spirit battle will occur in homes, it will occur in churches, it will occur in offices. I can give the example of a small child who is raised up to become more educated than his parents, suddenly can no longer be sent on errands and despises his ailing parents and undermines them. Many people who believed in fasting and prayer and giving and serving the Lord and fellowshipping when they were little, by the grace of God today, are sitting in offices and in positions of honor. And today, they deride the basic principles that allowed God to honor them and promote them. No matter how big you are, you must still remain little before God and serve him. I see the people who are junior workers, who work hard and are humble, suddenly promoted and become arrogant and treat the very people they left behind with the same haughty spirit they despised. I know pastors who forget all the people who have supported them in their church in its early years. And because now they are the senior pastors, have become so popular that they've forgotten their humble beginnings. Popularity is not what makes you honorable. Honorable is bigger than being having a title. Honor is bestowed by humility. In Proverbs chapter 18 verse 12, remember, before distraction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Do not let your heart rise up. Stay humble. No matter your position or achievements, be submissive and obedient to God. What makes people lose honor is when they lose service. I want to emphasize that humility is service, and service will keep you humble. And so no matter the position, keep serving the Lord. I want to end by showing you a few ways in which you can keep yourself humble. Number one, know who you are before God, and never forget that your place, your place in life is given to you by God. We were sinners who have been saved by grace, and no matter what you become or call yourself, remember that you were saved from your sins, and do not step do not stop serving God. David said, Thy words have I kept in my heart that I might not sin against him. Let us never become too big before God. Let's keep lifting up our hands before him. Let's kneel before him. Let's serve in his house, no matter the position we find ourselves in. Number two, remember that you had a beginning and you will also have an end because you are not God. No position you occupy is ever permanent and the world will go on without you when you are no longer here. They may hail you now, and this is free advice to every politician and emerging middle class. Paula Ambantem, no position is permanent. Whatever position you occupy, remember that God is always sovereign and let's serve him. Number three, surround yourself with friends, godly friends, who challenge you not to forget the lessons of your past and you will not be blinded by the successes you have achieved today. Number four, have a deliberate period in your life where you reflect over your life and remember how far you have come 
by the grace of God. And remember the authority figures in your life and honor them as a lifestyle. In James chapter 4 verse 6, the Bible says that God giveth more grace. He resisted the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. And in verse 10, it tells us, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. As a church, each year we have celebrated our anniversary. It has given us the opportunity to always reflect on our humble beginnings and appreciate how far the Lord has brought us. Today, PMI is 25 years. As a church, I want us to subtract 25 years from our lives and see our nakedness when we're nothing, when we had nothing. It is only by the grace of God that we are where we are today. Let us soberly count our blessings and give honor to the Lord. The world may be pulling you to a place of pride, of life and haughtiness and a place of self-destruction. But the Holy Ghost is also driving us into our future by showing us to be humble before God and to continue serving the Lord with humility and with a heart of gratitude. This Sunday, I invite all of you to join us with humility, reflect upon the grace of God upon our lives, and honor Him. Remember, before honor is humility. We cannot forget who God is in our lives. Let us still continue serving Him with joy and with gladness in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you with life, and may honor be your portion as you continue to walk in humility. In Jesus' name, amen.